Is it possible for brands or products to follow the Korean wave strategy of soft power diplomacy? If you're below 40 and you're watching this video, I'm quite sure that you have at least tried Korean food. If Gold previously loved Aaron Carter or Devon Sawa or even boys from the Backstreet Boys, why are we now attracted to boys from BTS such as Suga or Jimin? What's happening? We are... Okay, hold on. Maybe it's not all of us, but many of the millennials and Gen Z are now fanatics of the Korean idols. So we're following them. All, all what they buy, what they do, what they wear. Has it ever crossed your mind that if we have a brand or we are selling products, can we use the same strategy as the ones used by the Korean wave to make people keep buying whatever it is that we are selling? Here at Cravely, we try to identify based on what we read, whether there is any lesson or practical strategy that we can apply for our own brand. Any of those lessons or strategies has been used by other brands. Now, I'm not trying to say that I understand everything about branding. What we want to say is that we want to hear from you. What's your thoughts and comments? Maybe you can let us know in the below comment section. Can we really use the Korean wave strategies discussed in this video for our brand or sales? Keep watching and don't forget to subscribe to Cravely so that we can continue to make this kind of video. Korean wave refers to the outspread of Korean pop culture globally across the world. In 2004, the Korean wave contributed to 0.2% of the South Korea's GDP, or around 1.87 billion US dollar. In 2019, the Korean wave contribution toward the South Korea economy was recorded at around 12.3 billion US dollar. Wow, that's 12 times fold. Do you guys realize that Korean wave is a form of South Korean soft power diplomacy? So what is soft power diplomacy and what is its purpose? When we talk about soft power diplomacy, we usually refer to a book by Joseph Nye of Harvard University. Joseph Nye was the first person to introduce the term soft power in 1990 in his book that is called Bound to Lead, The Changing Nature of American Power. This concept was then developed in 2004 when he released his new book, Soft Power, The Means to Success in World Politics. Let's read the abstract taken from the Harvard faculty and publications website. Joseph said that soft power is the ability to affect others to obtain the outcomes one wants through attraction and persuasion rather than through coercion or payment. A country's soft power rests on its resources of culture, values, and policies. A smart power strategy combines hard and soft power resources. Public diplomacy has a long history of promoting a country's soft power, and soft power was essential in winning the Cold War. So here, Joseph argues that we can have the power to make other countries behave according to our needs by admiring our country's values, following our examples, and having the same vision of prosperity and transparency. The point is, we can make them obey us without having to resort to war. Now, this is important if we want to carry out our country's agendas or if we want to make others willingly assist and support us in carrying out those agendas. According to our research, there are actually two main strategies that we can use if we want to use the soft power strategy for our brand. Number one, we have to start with storytelling and then we complete it with community building. Storytelling is an activity that uses words, pictures, and actions that creates a new world and experience while encouraging listeners' imagination. Let's take an example of a mer sales associate. When they're trying to sell their expensive face cream, whenever they meet potential buyer, they will begin first with the story of Dr. Max Huber, the founding father of La Mer, who suffered from burns all over his body, and then he developed La Mer's formula from seaweed fermentation and managed to heal his burns. Now, this is a very powerful story because it successfully persuades so many people to buy one jar of cream of 60 milliliters for a price at 6 million. This is also a story that has made La Mer to be a brand with the value of $1 billion, according to Vogue. Brands or products can also use the same strategy. If we use storytelling, we can define abstract concepts and simplify complex messages. Just like La Mer, the storytelling strategy can be used to promote and form an idea. As this process involves emotions, anyone who listens to the storytelling can be less defensive and critical towards the idea, and thus they are prone to persuasion, and we can alter their point of view. Data can be accurate, but it can also be confusing. With storytelling, we can 
use it to explain those data. Storytelling can become a tool for both unification and inspiration. Okay, so what makes a good storytelling? A good storytelling should be amusing, trustworthy, educative, relatable, organized, and memorable. If you want to give your audience a memorable story, you need to make sure that the story has the following component. Number one, character. Every storytelling requires at least one character. Later, this character will be the key to connecting your audience with the story itself. If your audience is able to put themselves in the positions of the characters, then it is very likely that they will follow up your call to action. Number two, there's got to be conflict in the story. So conflict is a story or a lesson on how the character overcomes some challenges. This conflict will bring out an emotion and will connect your audience with a relatable experience for them. If there are no conflicts, then it's not a storytelling. Number three, resolution. Every good storytelling has its own resolution. And actually, it doesn't necessarily to be a happy ending. The closure may be when a character dies or breaks up or when we can no longer see the character. However, the resolution of your storytelling must complete the story and provide context for the character and their conflict. Then, we can create the flow to provide your audience with a call to action. Number four is structure. Your plot will be the structure of your storytelling. A video can have a good story and relatable character. However, if you have a bad plot, it will confuse your audience. And a plot does not need to be in a chronological order, but it needs to have a beginning, a midpoint, and then an ending. Number five is background. The context of your storytelling will affect how your audience understands your storytelling. A background is more than just a location. A background is how you can share your value and the purpose of your character and then modify your intonation or your action and make it easier for you to show them to order or to ask. For example, when creating an ad that tells about two major characters, one character is doing a small business and the other one works for a big company. Now, if you think about it, how can it be as reasonable as possible for them them to me and how the location can affect their discussion. Storytelling is a trial and error process. It will not be possible for us to do it right at the first time. You should just start to write your story and make any revisions that you want to make later. When we look at it, storytelling might sound hard to be done, but it is worth your time. Storytelling will help you to communicate your why in a more engaging ways. You can do storytelling. You can make storytelling. First, you need to collect your ideas and you have to start with writing and define the most appropriate channel for you. And then, after that, you can begin your storytelling. Brands that use storytelling, there are so many other brands that use storytelling in their business that has successfully used storytelling for their branding and sales. Examples of these brands are Apple, Nike, Airbnb. Those are only a few of the brands known for their storytelling techniques. Steve Jobs in his public speaking, rather than talking about technical computer jargons and anything technology, he use real life examples and then connect it with the product and how user can benefit from the product. So Steve Jobs talk to many and not only those who understand. As time develops and Gen Z emerge, a new term is coined aside from storytelling. It is known as story living. Storytelling versus story living. What is story living? And what is the difference between storytelling and story living? Well, story living is storytelling 2.0. We know that previous brands tell their stories to the audience. However, as Gen Z and millennials have been bombarded with storytelling, it is hard for brands to cut the cheese and grab Gen Z's and millennials' attention. Story living is a modernized version of storytelling, where brands enable their consumers to live inside the brand's narration. If storytelling tells a story to its audience, story living provides an opportunity for brand to have a dialogue with its community. Currently, Gen Z and millennials want an authentic and unique experience to grab the heart of Gen Z and millennials. It is no longer enough to just put TV commercials. They want brands to be humanized, to level up their trust, and thus build a more meaningful relationship with them. It is no longer as simple as I sell a product and then you buy it from me. Millennials and Gen Zs want a brand to ask them for their opinions and adjust their products to the authenticity of a millennial and Gen Z. This can be done by a brand, for example, by in involving an influencer, a key opinion leader, which is heard by the millennials and Gen Z. Brands must meet with a youth heard by his or her community and utilize it to represent or interact with their peers. This will make the conversation more natural, 
at this moment in time peer-to-peer -peer marketing provides so many value so that was it about Korean wave and how we can use their storytelling and community building strategies to build our own brand and sales what do you think do you have any other opinions on Korean wave and the strategies please share your experience or opinions in the comments below thank you for watching and don't forget to like and share also don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any other interesting videos from us see you on our next videos bye